<laughs> Hello, Montessorians. Thank you so much for joining us for yet another session of our live coaching calls. We do this every Thursday. It's 10.30 a.m. Pacific or 1.30 p.m. Eastern. What is that, Central? 12.30 p.m. Central? Whatever it is. I don't know why Central people get ignored so much, right? It's always... It skips. <laughs> yeah, poor folks. Um, but we, uh, we do this live every week. So if you want to join, it's open to all of our members. Anybody who wants to attend, as long as you're a Montessorian or have some impact on a Montessori school, uh, just go to needomarketing.com forward slash coaching. Come hang out with us, ask questions, interact. Um, we're bringing on great guests and, and talking about topics that are pertinent to you and mostly growing your school. Today, I'm really excited to have Cynthia Nixon with us. Cynthia, thanks so much for being here. Oh, thank you. I'm excited. Cynthia runs the sales department at Solutions 8, which is our core agency. That's where this shirt comes from. Um, and we were chatting a little bit about how sales might be the hardest thing for Montessorians to do. Um, that they're sort of repelled by it is the way I'm going to put that. And uh, so we thought, gosh, it would be great to have Cynthia sort of step up and like, teach us how to sell with the understanding that Montessorians hate sales. I don't even use the word sell in my, in my calls with them, you know, like promote or how to consult with parents. But I mean, really we're selling everything right all the time. Like everybody's a salesperson. Definitely. I mean, I think if you want to use the word enrollment counselor or something or yeah. some other term, but like we have to sell, like we have to get somebody in the door and they have to turn into somebody who's paying. So it is a sale. And I think, any salesperson doesn't even like the term sales, you know, it's like 38% of us like never said, Hey, I'm going to be a salesperson. Like when we grow up, we just end up in it because it's a people centered job. So, yeah. um, you know, it's just being with people and, and when you're passionate about something, it just makes it easier to get people over on your side. <laughs> well, that, that's actually kind of a really good point. And I think maybe the first one I'll make, which is we're not selling snake oil. We're selling the greatest system of education that's ever existed. Absolutely. So we're not even really selling. And I realize that sounded a little indoctrinated, forgive me, but I'm a big fan of Montessori as you can. Remember. Um, but that's a point that I want to make to our members, which is, you know, we're helping people and we just happen to be on the receiving end post sale, but that doesn't even necessarily mean that we're selling. We're like, like you just said, consulting or counseling or whatever. Right. Right. Exactly. But you know, like in sales, like anytime I've had a sales job, a sales role, like there's criteria that we have to meet. Like I've, I've been given a set of numbers or a set of goals that I've got to get to. So I think that's really important. If the schools aren't setting themselves up to know what they need to meet, they don't really have anything to aim for. So that's really important knowing your numbers, like before anything happens. So, I mean, that, that data is not going to lie. They're going to know where they need to go and what they need to do to get there. Well, now you're talking like a marketer because we're obsessed with our numbers. Let's do that. Do you mind that, Cynthia? Let's just pretend for a moment. Let's pretend that uh, you just got hired on as the director of admissions for Montessori School. Um, you've got a great sales background, as we know. Where do you start? What, like, what's the very first thing we do? Let's walk through that process and maybe build like kind of a, a napkin plan here. Um, I think, you know, like just getting them in, obviously, for the tour is going to be a big thing. Um, really an understanding my ideal client avatar is going to be important i need to know who i'm talking to and um connect with that person at that level so my goal would be to get you into the school for a tour so that's going to be a really important piece of that um and then learning about what's important to you like i need to know why you're here let's talk about what your goals are for your kids you know is this something that um you know, you didn't have the opportunity to have when you were young, and this is important for you to have for your kids. Like, I want to know about you. Like, I want to know what's in your mind. I want to know about your kids. So I can speak to you at that level. Yeah. And let's say that I'm the school owner and you and I are building a, a plan for, for sales or for intake or, you know, like, like the, the sales funnel, let's say. What are the, what are the questions that you would ask? What, what, like, how do, how do you lead me through that process of creating just the skeleton, the initial the building blocks of our sales program for, for Montessori schools specifically? I, th I think it is building that ideal customer avatar. I mean, I, yeah. think, I think really understanding who you're talking to is your, is your beginning point. So really hammering that down, I think I was telling Danine, I've got like a good worksheet to go through that, um, which helps, which I know, I know there's lots of different parents, but in general, 
these are the parents who want a better education for their kid. They know something about Montessori. They're in there because there's something they've learned and this is what's intriguing them. You know, I mean, I, I told you that I went on a tour with my kids when I was little because it was important and I told you my mom ripped me off and said my sister and not me to Montessori. So I was like, hey, what is this, you know? And I went, but they didn't follow up with me. Like I definitely probably would have been there if I would have gotten followed up on, you know, like I ended up just going to a preschool because they stayed on me. So I signed with them. So, you know, th that's how that went. Well, so you just made, I think maybe the most important point of the call, which is uh, for our Montessorians, if you don't follow up kinder care will, that's maybe what they do best. Um, they're going to, they're going to have an amazing email nurture. They're going to have uh, amazing follow-up, amazing customer service, amazing sales, amazing intake. They have an amazing CRM. They have just all the, all the, the marketing things that we do last, they do first. And that's what they care about most. You care about children most. Kinder care cares most about sales. Um, and Cynthia, I think you just gave us a really good example of that. You didn't know much about Montessori. You went to a Montessori school. They didn't really inform you well. Parent education wasn't great. Um, they didn't follow up. You ended up going to just a normal preschool. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. You have here uh, just kind of like a, a sales funnel broken down. Let's walk through that process. Tell me what you think. Uh, for a Montessori school specifically, how would you articulate that sales funnel? And then maybe each step of the way, we'll try to give some like seed in some tips and tricks for our Montessorians. Right, right. So I think, you know, first we've got your leads and prospects, which we know that they're working with Nito, or you're bringing all these leads into them. Um, and then you're going to have your inquiries, which, you know, these are going to be your phone calls or your emails, like you've got to follow up. I mean, I think the faster you can get to them, the better it's going to be. Like, if you can do it in 50 minutes or less. I mean, these are probably busy parents at work. They're calling, you know, I mean, just like anything, we're parents, we're looking for the best deal, we're looking for the best place, you know, it's just what we do. So the faster you can get them is better, right? So if they come in for a tour, you've got to follow up. Like if you have a CRM that's in place, I think we're working with HubSpot, you've got to build that process out because as soon as you're out of their mind, or out of their sight, they're, you know, they're out of their mind. Like they're not going to remember you because they're probably talking to a lot of schools. Right. So, you know, just to stay on top of them. So those automations are going to be super important. Um, you know, and you've got to ask really for, for the enrollment. I mean, it's great to give the tour. It's awesome to talk about the education, but if you're not saying, Hey, like, let's do this. You're not going to get it. And you gave me a really good soft touch example. I think we were chatting back and forth in Slack and you had, you had a comparative analysis between two statements and, and one was kind of like sterile, fell flat and wasn't going to move, wasn't going to make any progress. And then the other one I thought was still soft touch. It was still kind of aligned with the Montessori temperament, but did a good job of asking for the sale. Do you remember what I'm talking about? And can you give me that again? Probably. It was something like the very first one was, um, just stating what it was that Montessori was, you know, Hey, we think, you know, this, or I don't, oh gosh, I'm having, I'm having a hard time, Cynthia. Oh, really? I'm not going to wordsmith it the way that you did. <laughs> Wait, what did I say? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm losing my train of thought on that one too. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. So uh, here's example number one. Montessori school says uh, Montessori is this, Meaning, here's the explanation. I've seen kids go from this to that, uh, which, by the way, is great. So I'm just going to pause there because I love your whole transformative approach. I have seen this happen. I've seen a, a child go from this to that. I've seen this problem solved in this way. Um, it immediately asks the parent to empathize, uh, which is really good. But so the Montessori school approaches the parents and says, this is what Montessori is. This is what we can do. This is what we've seen in the past. Um, I've seen my own child do this. Mom says, that's great. And the school, oh, right. yeah, it is, isn't it? And then Cynthia wrote here, crickets. Right? Like, no. what happened? It's like, hey, Montessori's great. Awesome. That sounds good. Yeah. And then it, and then it just falls flat. It dies. Uh, as opposed to, and this is what I really like, uh, Cynthia wrote, hey, by the way, we have two openings in uh, Mindy's class. She's one of our best guides. I'd love for you to meet her because I know these things are important to you. Um, you know, would you like to schedule that? Like, do like move the, the to the next step? Um, 
right, right. do that right now. Right now, it's just we're leaving everybody to their own devices and, and we're not telling them what the very next step is. And I guess that's kind of the point here, right? Like you always need to tell them what the next thing they're supposed to do is. Otherwise, they won't do it. Right, right. And you're like qualifying as you go in a conversation. I mean, when you go to buy a car, they bring you up to the blue car and they're like, hey, do you like, you know, this radio? Do you need a four door? Right. He's like asking you and qualifying you. So now we know where we get you down to the red two door sedan. Right. Care about. Like we know this is what you want. And I'm just going to walk away from you. I got you to the car you want and be like, you're not going to say, you know, most likely I want to buy it. Like right. that's my job to say to you, like, great. We've got you here. Let's get you rolled. Like enrolled now. We got two spots left. You know, let's do it. Yeah. Well, and I love the way that you've structured this too. I think it's just the perfect breakdown where you say, "Hey, we have two openings in Mindy's class." And by the way, we don't have to lie. We don't have to create false scarcity. Most classes have a limit, so you just get to tell the parent, "Hey, we have two openings." Instantly, there's scarcity in their mind. Instantly, the human mind goes, "Oh my goodness, you only have two, and I bet you really want this. I need, yeah, I need this right now." So we have two openings in Mindy's class. And the other thing that you've done there that I think is just truly brilliant is you've, 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 there's now a person, there's a human, there's Mindy. And now I'm really interested in Mindy. So you're seeding the next step without, without selling anything. We have two openings in Mindy's class. Just that one statement is already so compelling. It already, you know, it, it begs so many questions and opens up this whole new world of, of possibility in just in terms of ascending them. And then, and you, you wrote here, she's one of our best guides. And then uh, I'd love for he, for you to meet her because these are the things that are important to you. So this is the other thing that I like. Uh, we have two openings in Mindy's class. And by the way, I know that this thing is important to you. And if you can connect the parent's needs to the solution that you're providing. So, hey, I happen to know that, you know, my, my son's name is Sammy. I happen to know that Sammy's having some introversion issues. He's not getting out there. Mindy's really good at helping kids, and I, you know, break out of the bubble and, and sort of, you know, watching and, and uh, guiding that process. I'd really love for you to meet her. Like instantly it's scarcity, specificity, and then your value proposition to my needs. Like that is, I mean, that's a formula right there. It's the perfect <laughs> formula. And there's no skills whatsoever. It's just, oh, you have a problem? Great. I have a solution. Do you need help with this? Like, should, can we put these things together and make sure you don't have a problem anymore? Right, right. And better yet, like, oh, you know, hey, you know, Ted last year had that same issue and you should see him now. Right now we've got like an example of something from, it doesn't have to be from your school, right? It could be anywhere. Like this, this is what Montessori can do for your kid. Yeah. You know, that's super important. Well, and that's a really big problem too that Montessorians run into is, and this has happened to me when I toured uh, the Montessori school my children go to now, I looked around and I just thought there's no way my kid will ever do this. Cause you see, you know, all these little boys and girls and they're, um, they're working intently in this classroom um, on some of them are really advanced exercises and they're, you know, three, four, and three. I mean, they're, they're little kids and it's relatively quiet and it's calm and it's peaceful. And I'm just thinking about my son and, you know, I'm like, Oh, he's going to be bouncing off the walls, throwing, you know, Crayon. Out. yeah, exactly. Like just, just going to rip through here like a, a tornado. But what you've done here too is like, Hey, we've seen this, like you're connecting their child to your solution. Um, and then telling them what the next step is. And so I guess if we're gonna, we're gonna drive a take home message, that's really what it is. Like, let them know what the next step is. Right, I think that's super important because they're not gonna necessarily tell you and they're gonna keep on looking and you yep. just don't wanna do that. You've mentioned follow-up a few times. Help me with follow-up because I actually struggle with this a lot. I know, I know Montessorians do too. It, it's so hard to follow up without feeling annoying. Like, I just feel like I'm, I'm pestering you. Like, hey, have you made a decision? Hey, is there anything I help with? Hey, do you have any questions? Like, how do you do that? And how often do you do it? What's appropriate? Like, what's the, what's the follow-up advice you have for us? I mean, I, I, people are expecting it. I mean, people are so busy today. Like, I feel better when somebody is following up with me because I probably forgot you. And I obviously called you because you were important at some point. Wow. You know, like, <laughs> I appreciate a follow-up. I don't think people see it that way. I don't. When you have something they want, it's, yeah. not, it's not bugging them you're benefiting them. Like, Hey, I'm still knocking on your door. Cause I still have this amazing gift to give you. Like you're just not taking me up on it. So, I mean, I think that's something that maybe we can work on is really establishing a good follow-up automation for them. Like they can use their CRMs that um, it's not going to be buggy. I mean, it's important. It's important. I mean, that's the gem of email marketing, right? Like it gets to babysit 
for you, but you're sharing an important message. So Right. Well, and there's so much content in Montessori. I mean, there's just, that's the one thing that no other, no other form of education has on Montessori, which is there's just so much like really deep information that you can share and give and provide and not to toot our horn, but Nito has done, I think a really good job of putting that in a box and saying, here, here's everything you need. Um, And I've noticed at Solutions 8, you follow up with content. So you'll send a client like, hey, here's a case study. Here's a blog. Tell me about that. How do you, how do you choose the content? Uh, Do you think people are engaging with it? Like, how does that help with the sales process? I mean, I think you have to find the right cadence for that. I mean, I think if you're just constantly pelting with information, that comes across salesy. But if, you know, you can write automations that are like super personable, like they, they don't have to sound salesy. Like you could just write, gosh, what, I mean, really, whatever, just sound as natural as you just write as natural as you talk. And then that conversation is going to be, you know, like received well. And then if you're like, oh my God, you know, hey, I just got this article. I wanted to share it with you. Mm -hmm. Like that doesn't sound like I'm pushing anything on you. Like, hey, I just wanted you to read this, you know, like something that's important to this whole piece. Yeah. Well, and if you're really thinking about them too, you know, going back to this little script you wrote for us, if you've identified their pain points, which is huge, and then you can send them something that's actually applied, and this isn't necessarily an automated follow-up, but just if you're following up with somebody directly, if you can send them something that's applicable to the pain points they've already articulated, all you're showing there is that you're thoughtful. Like I'm empathizing with your needs. I remember you telling me you're concerned about this thing. By the way, here's a piece of content. You know, my child's really struggling with math. Hey, I, you know what? I remember you saying that. And there's, here's this amazing piece of content on Montessori math. Here's how we teach the Pythagorean theorem. You know, like, wow. I mean, the fact that you even listened to me and remembered that and then thought to send that to me later, that's huge. That right. for relationship building, there's nothing bigger. Right, right. And I think that's the point of sales too. It's like, nobody really cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I mean, that's mm-hmm. really the bottom line. Like, you know, I got, think I was telling you that, you know, my friend was going sofa shopping. And one place had it for five hundred dollars more. She bought it there because the lady cared. Like she cared. Yeah. She's like, I'm buying from you. I can buy it cheaper, but you showed me that you care. Like right. we sat down, they sat down and like did her diagram of her di- her living room, you know, and that's what mattered that she took the extra step. You know, she just went that one extra way. So I mean, I think that's just a key point in it. And you can relate that in your email automations and it really Plus, you have one place to manage everybody. I mean, if you got sticky notes, call Sarah, call Tim. You know, if you got these things all over, you can't do what you do for the school and follow up with these parents. So Absolutely. it's it's really important. Talk to me a little bit about CRMs. We plan on rolling out HubSpot for Montessori schools. We have, it's absolutely free to use. So for my members, HubSpot has a free CRM that's amazing. It's more robust than most paid CRMs and it's free and it'll be free forever. Um, so, you know, a lot like the other tools that we promote, we promote Calendly cause it's free. We used to promote MailChimp cause it's free, but they just changed their automation rules. So we're finding something else for you, but now we're going to promote uh, HubSpot. Uh, Montessorians have been begging us almost to come up with a CRM for Montessori schools. And yeah. we've identified HubSpot as the ideal solution. We already have two schools on it that are beta testing it for it as a, as a Guinea pig. Wow. The issue though is, is no matter how powerful it is, you still have to use it. So. Like if you were to break down, I'm putting you on the spot here, Cynthia, so I'm so sorry. I know this is a big question, but if you were to break down like the core cadence of using your CRM, I mean, it's more than just an Excel file with, with names in there, right? Like how do you, how do you go through and how do you use that as, as a tool that helps contribute to sales? Well, I mean, I think you would set that up like after somebody visits and, you know, they did not enroll in the spot, like, oh, thank you for your time. I'll be back in touch, right? Like you couldn't get them to commit to a class like you're going to throw them right into the automation because you're going to have somebody else roll in and somebody else call right now. You, your, your funnel is like filling up and you don't have time to babysit it. So, you know, you're going to set your automation for, um, you know, of course, a thank you for coming in. And then, you know, in HubSpot, you can set these goals. So if they wrote back to one of your emails, it stops. Right. So you don't look like a dumb, dumb, like your emails keep going and you've already talked to the person. So, you can set these workflows up where it it stops the communication if they write back, you know, or you yeah. can stop it on your own. But if they don't write back, right, then you send it like something in two days. Like, oh, hey, did you forget, right? Something casual, then maybe wait another two days. Hey, and you know, the class, remember we mentioned the two classes, like, I don't want that, I don't want you to miss that, you know, and you could just set 
this pace up that seems very natural that you would do anyway if you just sat there and were waiting for Sarah to enroll. So, you know, like it's just doing this for you. So, and I like what you just said about it's basically building triggers. So if the parent has done this, then we respond in this way. So if they've come and taken a tour and the tour is complete, and that's really, that's a drag and drop in HubSpot. HubSpot has these great columns. They call it a board. And you can say this record uh, was, had scheduled the tour. They just completed the tour in the menu. Drag them into that board. We can trigger communication. So, hey, Cynthia, thank you so much for coming on the tour. Really appreciate you. Here's what you need to know. Here are the next steps, et cetera. And then, okay, you know, they came back from the tour. They filled out the admission form. And now, hey, thanks so much for filling out the form. Here's the, here's the process, et cetera. And it's, I mean, that's, that's a, it's a tedious task. To say that there's nothing involved here is, you know, we would, it would be a missing Absolutely. But, but, well, once you've done it, you have it forever. I mean, right. and, you know, this isn't going to change, at least not often. Um, and you're already supposed to do this for every single person anyway. So, you know, in theory, all of these emails live in your sent box. You just have to go get them. Absolutely. No, it's, it's a must, a must. I have a question from Emily. She said, what did MailChimp change about automation rules? I've been using it for autoresponders for our school on a free account. Emily, I'm pretty sure you're grandfathered in. Um, MailChimp just recently, it was in the last month or two, uh, no longer offers automation in their free accounts, um, which is catastrophic for us because we've been pushing MailChimp from the very beginning. And they've offered that, by the way, for years and years and years. I've actually said on a coaching call, I don't know how they can afford to do this because it was an amazing value add. Um, I've always really loved and respect them, still do. Uh, they've done a lot for us. So huge fan of MailChimp, but I, we're not recommending it to new Montessori schools um, just because it, it mm -hmm. that's the one thing that we just had to have. So we're beta testing a couple of the tools. Nothing is really standing out as like the clear winner. Um, Mail, or HubSpot's automation is too expensive. Um, I think before you get the automated process, it's like 400 bucks. I mean, it's not a cheap, um, a cheap application for automation. For the CRM, it's great. So we're going to go look for something. Um, yeah, sorry. All right, Cynthia, I'm going to, you mentioned knowing who your ideal customer avatar is. Oh, hey, can you tell us about Gusta? Yeah, yeah, I was just flipping to that. Yeah, so Gusta, I mean, you could definitely use this when you're thinking about um, your writing. I mean, I think this is a good formula. I mean, it's good to have in your head as you're, as you're talking to somebody, but Gusta is, um, G, grab attention, U, understanding, S, solution, uh, T is for trust, and A is for action. So, um, repeat that one more time. G is for grab attention. Grab attention. U is understanding. S, S is solution. Yep. T is trust. A is action. Right. G, U, S, T, A. Okay. Right, right. So, um, you know, G, you want to grab their attention, which, you know, I mean, I know, you all are working at getting their leads into the door. Um, but, you know, just even the email series, just subject lines are a big thing. I'm a fan of like, you know, I subscribe to a lot of things, but I screenshot my screen when I see subject lines that make me open them. Mm. Because, um, I mean, how many emails do we get? I just like, if it's boring, snoozy, I'm moving out. But if it's like regarding something or you know there's those key ones that make you click so it's just always important to be looking at your subject lines which i'm sure you guys go over but um you know just talking about headlines too and whatever you're writing um curiosity based examples like um, how you should actually be choosing your child's education or you know modern viral he didn't speak for years what he's doing now will make you cry right things that you want people to open your documents things right like so um, that's just to grab the attention. Then the understanding really is just when I'm asking you questions like communicating with you, you know, just talking to you and learning about who you are, like, why are you here? What's frustrating you about other schools or what do you know about Montessori? Can um, I ask you about this one just briefly to pause here? Because I think this might be the biggest gap that we have uh, when, when it comes to selling Montessori. It's, it's, very different. It's a massive paradigm shift. You know, I mean, for a bunch of reasons, the, uh, the, the three-year cycle, I don't know of any other program that does that. And then multi-age classrooms and then larger classrooms. And they're not teachers, they're guides. Um, there are so many, a lot of them are small, some of them are big, but so many things that are just way different. So much so that you'll have people, you know, they'll speak negatively about Montessori because they don't understand it. And then, you know, they look at it and like, oh my goodness, this is so weird. 
it's really hard to help parents understand what Montessori is. And there's this strange kind of obsessive need to where when somebody comes in the door, you just want to tell them everything. And, you know, that's the best way, I think, to scare somebody off. So how do you, and I realize there's no good answer to this, but how do you bridge that gap? Like, how do you continue education without scaring them off? Make sure they understand it enough to know that, hey, we're not apples to apples to kinder care. Yeah, they're cheaper because they're not preparing your child for life. They're keeping your child safe and clean, maybe. But, you know, I mean, there's no <laughs> long-term preparation. Kinder care is just toys and Clorox. Like, this is preparation for life. But, but to be able to get that across takes... I mean, gosh, I've been doing this two years. I'm not a Montessorian. I've been doing this two years and I still like, I feel like I've only scratched the surface. So how do we, how do we educate parents enough to be able to make an educated decision? I think when you see somebody's eyes glaze over, you've lost them. Right? Like when you're over sharing, you know, cause you don't, you don't want to like speak to the points that don't matter to them yet. You know, they'll, they'll learn that and you're going to share that, but they're coming to you maybe with something really specific. You know, I heard an example of a realtor one time, took this lady around and, and never asked her what was important to her in this house. Like she had really specific needs and wants and he was just selling every single benefit to the house and never heard you know, that she needed a two bedroom with a, you know, jacuzzi for her old bones. Like he was just going off on the tile and all this. And she's like, have you even heard me say once? You never once asked me, you never, like, you're not listening at all. So I think that that's really important to connect with the parent for, you know, for their kids. And, you know, all those other pieces can be talked about, but just don't run over somebody. Oh, that's brilliant. So you're, and I mean, this honestly pr should probably occur to me naturally if I were a better human, but um, what I'm hearing is identify what their pain points are and then speak to the facets of Montessori that speak specifically to those pain points. And it's not that the rest of it isn't important, it's that that will come later. But if you can, and I don't wanna use the word convince, but if you can explain how Montessori will better address this pain point than other schools or types or forms or whatever, um, that's gonna set us ahead. How did I do rephrasing that? I think that's exactly it. I mean, sometimes when you know too much, that's, that is what scares you off, you know, like, yeah. you just don't want to have somebody confused. Like I think, I think, I think it's easier with like PPC and all these other things there. It can dig so deep that you can lose people just in the brilliance that you know about this product or this service or, you know, this school. So, I mean, it could just scare people away in general, you know, like it, maybe it does. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know enough about Montessori to talk about it. I just know that they didn't follow up with me and I didn't end up, you know, enrolling there with my kids. So and that's every school. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to poke our, our members. I know that there's some that follow the rules, but I think the stereotype is that our members don't follow up and they'll tell me that every consulting call I'm ever on, um, that's a, a relatively ubiquitous truth. Like, oh goodness, we just don't have the time. Um, um, and I'm actually, I feel really ashamed right now of myself because as you're saying this, I realize that I hop on these consulting calls and I don't ask anybody what's important to them. You know, <laughs> marketing. I just want to tell them all about Nito. I'm like, oh my goodness, we have so many things and you've seen our content, and you've seen our services, and you've seen our website, but I don't start with, tell me what's important to you. I almost feel like that should be an email. Like when somebody schedules a tour, the very first email we should send them is, Hey, we just want to make sure that the tour is, um, that we're able to tailor this to your needs. Can you tell me what's important to you about choosing a school? And their response there is going to be magic. Um, I think and maybe they don't respond. we follow up. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You know, maybe, and maybe they don't respond, but that's going to give you a chance to have that conversation when you're with them. Like, well, and that tells you a lot too. You know, I mean, how engaged are they? Are they mission appropriate? Cause that's the other thing that Montessori needs. It needs engaged parents. Mom and dad have to buy in. If they don't, you know, I mean, they're just going to undo everything that, that the school's doing when the kid goes home. And that's not entirely true, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no. I was a VP of membership for um, PTO for a long time, just in a public school. And it's, it's hard. It's really hard. There's always going to be like the one parent who says yes to everything and then nobody does anything. I mean, it's absolutely. Tough. It's tough. I stopped you. We were on you. So I think we're on S now of Gusta solution. Oh, solution, right? Yeah. So you're kind of talking about that. You were like, find that pain point and, and fit it with what that piece of Montessori can offer to that pain point. So you, you did touch on that. Mm -hmm. 
and then trust. I mean, um, you know, that you're showing that you're listening and that you're caring and you're developing this relationship with the parents. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate thing. I mean, you know, you're, you have to win the parents over and they are trusting this experience to be the reason that they're in the school. I mean, I think we've all like had bad experiences at different stores and you just learn to, you know where to go where you feel like you're getting good care or you know that people care about you. I mean, everybody uses like the Nordstrom example because you're going to pay more because you're going to be cared for more. You know what to expect there. And I think the parents want to feel that. They know Montessori is a bigger investment and they want like that whole experience for them and for the kids. This is a nuance, but it's something that I've always thought is really interesting. Um, because we run Google ads for so many schools, we listen to a lot of inbound calls. And uh, most schools are great at this, but every now and then you'll listen to a call where the person answering the phone should not be on the phone. And now I'm not saying that they're a bad person or they shouldn't be at the school or we should fire them or anything. I'm just saying that their skill set is not, it's not going to instill or build trust at all. You know, they might be short or snippy or, or just disconnected or, you know, maybe they're just way too busy. But the problem is, is, is the parent, when I hear that, I immediately connect that to, oh, you're not going to pay attention to my son. And, you know, when this happens, like, you know, like, like you're just, you're reading into so much. It's probably not true at all. Um, but as far as building trust is concerned, I think the first interactions you have with these prospects, they have to be amazing, which, you know, I mean, the first time they show up to the school, you've got to do a really good job welcoming them. And the first time they, they call, you have to receive them in a way. And I know that's like hard. And it's just this ongoing marathon because it's, you know, it's, it's the same phone call for you every single day for 30 years. But every single time you have that phone call, it's the first time for that parent. Right. Absolutely. That's a great point. And I think that should be, a, you know, a training across the board for the school. Like anybody who's going to pick up the phone, like, this is how we do it. This is how we say it. And this is what happens when this happens. Yeah. Which is the A and Gusta action. Invite them to take action. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're a little short on time, but I still, I really love your birthday candle test. Can you tell us what that is? I I <laughs> so this is along with the um, ideal customer avatar. So, um, you know, this just helps you really speak directly to your ideal customer, the customer avatar. So, um, so, you know, what would this person wish for on their birthday? So number one, you know, somebody would say, oh, I wish my kids would listen to me. But really what they're saying is I wish my kids could prioritize when I give them tasks to do, mm. right? So we know we're going to speak to that part of that parent, right? Like that's really what they're saying, right? They, they, they want their kids to, to listen, but they're really missing those little intricate pieces. Will you dive into number two as well? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I wish for my kids to go to good college. Like really what they're saying is I wish that I knew how to set them up for this while they're young, you know, with the right preschool or school with friends, teachings, and my own examples. I think that's huge too, because I think the Montessori parent in particular, I mean, sometimes, and, and Matt talks about this a lot, Matt's, Matt's our founder, uh, uh, he, he runs Bergamo and he also founded, you know, marketing, but, you know, every now and then you just get a family that comes in and says, oh, my kid's going to go to Harvard. And that's a different approach to parenting in a different paradigm and, and you know whether or not they're suited for Montessori I guess is up to the Montessorian but most Montessori parents their primary concern is education for life you know I mean we're, everybody's always talking about how everything we're going to school for won't exist by the time you get out of school like what you're being trained on now in two years is going to be antiquated etc 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 and I think Montessori parents just really want their children to be uh equipped you know like learn to learn and mm. um you know, somebody comes in saying things like, I want my kids to go to a good college. I, I just think you're absolutely right. They, they don't really like, that's not, you know, I mean, if, if it's between go to a good college and everything else is miserable or, you know, just life goes on, but now they, they, they know how to, um, how to participate in the world. Uh, I just think that's what we've pointed to is, is the path, but it's not really what they mean. Um, anyway, that was tangential, but I love, I love the birthday candle test. Would this person, what, what are they wishing for on their birthday? And then how do I connect what it is I'm providing to that? I think that's great. Good, good. I hope it can work for, yeah. <laughs> for schools, you know, just to dig a little deeper and it's not just a tour. It's not just a kid. Like there's a big, you know, 
there's so, so much importance behind that and you just have to ask for that enrollment don't be scared the worst thing they can say is no not right now you're not you know it's fine it's yeah. fine you know just keep on them just keep on them well so th those i'm going to summarize my take-home messages everything that i've learned so far um one of the things that i love that you said cynthia that i just think is so brilliant is, is identify their pain points um, you know, and it doesn't have to be pain points necessarily, but identify what's important to them. So what do you have to have? What do you really need? And then work to connect that to what it is that you're selling. And in this case, we're selling Montessori. And by the way, if what's important to them doesn't connect to Montessori, then they're not a right fit. And that's okay too. Um, sometimes when we get into sales mode, it's always like, okay, well, how do I make this work? Sometimes you don't. And you let them know, Hey, you know, I don't, I don't think that this is necessarily the right fit for you or your child just because, and then you can explain. Um, but identify what's important, connect it to, uh, what you're offering. And then what I really like that you've said a couple of times is um, invite them to take action because we don't do that right now. And the way that you invite them to take action, I think is, is really sharp. Hey, we have two openings in minis class. She's one of the best guys. We have. <laughs> like that's, that's a template right there. Um, for so many reasons, any questions from our live attendees before we sign off, anybody have any questions, comments, concern, or confessions, any comments for Cynthia? And while they're typing, I'll just say, um, if you're watching this recorded or if you're watching it on Facebook, you can always participate live um, by going to neatomarketing.com forward slash coaching. If you're on Facebook, you can watch it live, but we don't, it's so hard to manage multiple, you know, entities and, and message threads and whatnot. So um, if you want to come in and ask questions and participate as an attendee, please go to um, the Zoom meeting, which is neatomarketing.com forward slash coaching. We do this every single Thursday. Uh, we've been doing this for almost two years, which is pretty cool. But we do it every Thursday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, a lot of the times we have great guests, just like Cynthia. And um, normally it's Deneen, our, our community manager. I'm stepping in for because she's in the Amazon right now, not the part that's on fire. Yeah. yeah, other than that, I think we're good to go. Cynthia, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate you. Live attendees, thanks for being here too. Thanks for your questions. You all make it so much better. Um, appreciate everybody, and I'll see you next Thursday.